We are very excited and thrilled for this Saturday. Fox BBC Fight Night Live on Fox and Fox Support is, is headlined by undefeated Polish star and Brooklyn native Adam Kownowski as he battles the exciting former title challenger, the hard-hitting Chris the Nightmare Adeolam in a heavyweight showdown from Barclays Center, the home of Brooklyn Boxing. We get started at 8 o'clock Eastern 5 Pacific time and it features unbeaten interim WBA light heavyweight champion Sir Marcus Brown, also an Olympian, as he battles the former world champion Jean Pascal in a 12-round matchup. Also, Brooklyn's own Curtis Stevens dropping down to 154 as he squares off against Wale Omotoso in a 10-round matchup. Tickets for the event, they are going quickly. You can purchase them. Ticketmaster.com or also at the American Express box office at Barclay Center, and all brought to you by TGB Promotions. And speaking of TGB Promotions, they have been so busy for the past several years, I mean, promoting events all over the world, and Saturday night is no exception. It gives me great honor and pleasure to introduce the president of TGB Promotions, one of the smartest minds that boxing has ever seen. Please welcome my dear friend, Mr. Tom Brown. Well, thank you, Ray, and thanks, everyone, for joining us for this conference call for what should be an amazing PBC on Fox and Fox support this card uh, presented by Premier Boxing Champions at the Barclays Center, the home of Brooklyn Boxing on this Saturday night. Brooklyn Boxing is now a very well-known brand in the industry because of the dedication to boxing and the support of Brett Yormark, the CEO of BSE Global. I'm very excited about this fight. I've been waiting for this one for a long time. I know Adam and Chris have as well. It's a very intriguing fight in the heavyweight division, a division which has certainly got a lot of attention and a lot of buzz lately. So thank you, everyone, again for joining us, and I'll hand things back over to Ray to introduce the fighters. Ray? Thank you very much, Tom. Greatly appreciate it. And as Tom mentioned, yes, this is a fight that we are very excited about. Uh, The Barclays Center, there's something special about that arena. The fight fans come out. The building is just tailor-made for boxing. And on Saturday night, we have a heck of a main event with Adam Kovnatsky and Chris Ariola. Let's meet one of the participants in our main event of the evening. His record, 38 wins, five losses, one draw, 33 wins coming by way of knockout from Los Angeles, California. A three-time heavyweight title challenger who's gone up against the likes of Deontay Wilder, Vitaly Klitschko, Tomas Admas, and also Burbank Severn. Most recently, he was in action at AT&T Stadium, a part of the Spence Garcia Fox Sports pay-per-view event. He finished off the previously unbeaten Jean-Pierre Augustin in March. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the always entertaining and the extremely dedicated and focused uh, Chris the Nightmare Areola. Hey, how you doing? How you guys doing, man? Um, first, um, I'd like to thank uh, everyone that's out here right now, Fox, for putting this great show on. And uh, can't wait to get in the ring with um, Adam, man. It's going to be a fun night. It's going to be a great night of boxing. And uh, I'm excited. I've been working hard. And uh, I know I know Adam's ready. And I'm very ready to uh, get this show on the road. When speaking of Chris Adiola supported Adam Kovnatsky, his record, 19 wins. No losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. A 30-year-old who was born in Poland before moving to Brooklyn when he was only seven years of age. He is no stranger to Barclays Center. This will be the ninth time that he has fought at Barclays Center, but the first as a main event at Barclays Center. Had an impressive decision over former champion Charles Martin last September, most recently halted to Gerald Washington in two rounds in January. Live on Fox, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the entertaining Adam Kovnatsky. Hello, uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I can't wait to put on the show on uh, August 30th. Well, thank you very much, Adam. Now we will open it up to the media for questions. If they have any questions for Chris Areola, Adam Kovnatsky, or also Mr. Tom Brown, as we are looking forward to Saturday Night Slut Fest. PBC live on Fox. Our first question is going to come from Mark Lenawala from Sporting News. Please go ahead. Adam, how are you doing? 
I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Um, I was just curious. You know, you've been chopping at the bit and calling out Deontay Wilder for quite some time. Um, with the recent news with Dillian White, do you feel like a very convincing win on Saturday night would, you know, help you possibly slip in there and, and get that fight with them a little sooner than expected, perhaps? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, from what I heard, uh, the, uh, Deontay Wilder has OTs coming up. There's a fight with Tyson Fury. So uh, definitely, hopefully towards the end of 2020, I'll be able to get a crack at him. But most importantly, i got to make sure I can get past Chris Ariola August 3rd this Saturday. Sure, sure. Thanks very much. Our next question is going to come from Peter from Fight News. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, gents. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi, Adam. First for, for Chris, uh, when you called... Joe Goosen three months ago, you knew it's gonna be it's gonna be a hard training camp. Why Joe Goosen and uh, what happened during the, those three months? And the question for Adam next. Adam, I know you many many years, and for many many years, the number one on your list was Chris Ariola. Why Chris? First, uh, Chris, if you can start with that. Well, um, the reason I I, I went with um, Joe Goosen is. First, I've, I've known Joe for many years, man. I've always been a fan of Joe ever, ever since I could steal Corrales' fight. And, you know, um, he's part of the family. Dan Gushin, uh, my old uh, promoter, rest in peace. So I've always uh, wanted to keep it in the family. I like the way he works. I like uh, that he's old school, very old school uh, kind of a uh, coach. He's very um, methodical, and he makes sure that, he, that he's uh, he's there every minute of training ca- of training camp. So... Um, it was a very beneficial and it was a great, uh, great experience for me. And uh, I can't wait to uh, fight this Saturday so I can put everything on the line. Adam, please. I mean, watching Chris, he's a great fighter. I think he's still one of the biggest names in the heavyweight division with all, all the great fighters he was in there with. Uh, he beat a lot of them. And then uh, the top ones, he came a little bit short. So I know if I could beat... Chris Ariola, I'm more on those sides that are really on the top of the game and top of the division. So I think being a guy like Chris Ariola puts me up up there in the top 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 ten, top five category. I'm, I'm going to jump with one quick one also for both of the guys. I had the pleasure to speak with Joe Goosen last night, and he said he doesn't believe the fight goes past seven. The fight is going to be decided by possibly one error. Chris, your opinion also, Adam, you. You know, I, I honestly, I, I honestly agree on that, and it's not just or you know, not saying anything negative against uh, um, Kalnaki because it could go either way. He could knock me out, like I could knock him out. The thing is that we're both, we both have an an, an extensive or amateur experience. We both know how to fight, and all we we both just need a little window opportunity to knock someone out. That's all we need because we have the experience and we have the power. That's the reason why uh, Joe would say that because we're both the fighters that exciting fighters that are gonna put it on the line. Yeah, I'm ready for twelve rounds, but uh, if it ends early, I get an opportunity to finish it quick. I'm gonna <laughs> go for it. And uh, as you said before, uh, I mean, you, you, if you guys have been boxing since for a while. You've seen Chris around for a while. You to be coming up in the past couple of years. Our styles are like a perfect matchup or like a dream matchup for uh, or for a fan. You both come forward, you both look for a knockout. So it's definitely going to be a lot of heavy make, haymakers being thrown. And, uh, it's one of us trying to get the finish, or both of us trying to get the finish. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I have a couple of questions for uh, Chris. Hey, Chris. Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, so w- with Adam, he is he's, uh, seeking to become the first, you know, not in this fight, but eventually in his career, seeking to become the first Polish heavyweight champion. You know, a lot of the storyline, Chris, around your career the last several years when you've had your opportunities in championship fights is to try to become the first Mexican heavyweight champion. Obviously, that did not happen, and now Andy Ruiz has done that. I wonder if you could speak to your experience of, having that sort of 
something that was part of your identity of the guy trying to become the first from your heritage now the way Adam is trying to become the first from his background? What was that like for you and, um, and uh, you know, the, the kind of pressure he may feel for that? See, the, the, the thing is that he's gonna, he has a whole nation, a Polish nation behind him. And it and it is and it is a bit of uh, um um a burden, not so much a burden, but it's a big weight on your shoulders to be carrying around. And uh, as for myself, it was it was a big a hard burden, a hard weight on my shoulders for me to carry around. And now that uh, um Andy did it, I'm I feel like the weight's off my shoulders now. Now I could just actually just fight. And I think Adam just needs to just fight and not worry about first this or four, first that because the main thing is, is getting that win and getting that fight and they, not getting caught up in the whole being the first because it's uh it's um it's a bit overwhelming if you get if you let yourself be caught up in that situation. Chris, did you get caught up in that the first time you fought? I mean, you fought for the title three times, so I think probably by the third time. You know, the, that had maybe diminished a little bit. It maybe wasn't as big, even though it was certainly part of the story. Um, when you say it was a burden or you got caught up in it, was that the first time? Was that, you know, the, the second or, or the third? Like, Absolutely. It, was the, it always the first a pressure? Time, the, the first time was really the, the most pressure when I fought Kletchko. That was the, the biggest pressure. The second time when I fought Adam, I, I didn't have no pressure. I didn't feel like I had the pressure because I was actually in really good shape and I was ready for that fight just happened. I got caught, and it's boxing. And, and well, Adamick was, Adam wasn't for the title, though, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I missed Stavern. Um I got you. Okay. Yeah, Stavern. Yeah, with Stavern, I was I was in great shape for that fight. I was ready for that fight. I was ready to take uh, the title. I was actually worried about the fight more than worrying about making history. And that's really what you really have to be worried about is just the fight in hand, the task in hand, because if you don't take care of the task in hand, then there is no history. And, and that's what about exactly the third what one? Andy Reach did. And what about with Wilder? I mean, was, was that point, you know, was that even on uh, your mind? But, but, no, it wasn't even on my mind at all. My, my, and my mind at that point was just winning the title. I wasn't even thinking about being the first Mexican or being the first anything. All I wanted to be is being the first champion. I just wanted to be a champion. So let me ask this. Now that Andy has done that and did so, you know, in a huge upset, uh, what were your feelings about that? Were you happy for him? Happy as a as a Mexican American to see there be a champion? Absolutely, I was. I was happy for him, for his family, because he deserves it, man. Like like I said, I've known the kid since he was 17 years old, and he's always been hungry. He's always worked hard. He's always been a big boy, but he's always been a big boy with skills. And I was elated for him. I was elated for the for the Mexican fans that finally we had a Mexican champion, and uh, he did it, man. And and honestly, a lot of pressure came off of me, and you know, I congratulate him, man. I'm I'm happy for him. All right, so no disappointment that should you get another chance to fight for a heavyweight title, that you cannot accomplish that particular feat. Absolutely not, not at all. I'm not I'm not a bitter man, or not, I'm not a man that's going to be a, a resentful man because you know what, man? There's a little, there's a short life, man, and uh, and I love it, man, and and I appreciate him. And I love what he did for the sport because, and honestly, he, he didn't just do something big for the Mexican people, but he made something big for the for the sport of boxing and for uh, the heavyweight division because now it's wide open. All right, very good. Chris, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Good luck thank to you. both of you guys on Saturday. Thank you. You too. Our next question is going to come from Carlos Toro from Fightful News. Please go ahead. Thanks, and uh, thanks so much for to both of you for taking time to talk to us. My first question for Chris, you know, Chris, at one point you were pretty much in Kanoski's shoes when, about a decade ago when you fought J- Jamil McLean, a younger, unknown yep. heavyweight looking to beat a, a veteran before moving on to fight for a title, and now you're kind of in the on the other side. How does it feel to yep. be the veteran in this type of fight instead of being the younger heavyweight? Yeah, you know what, um, it, it's – it's kind of a, it, it's a, the circle of life, man. Everything goes around, right? Goes around full circle, you know. Um, I was once the young lion, and now I'm the old veteran. And that's exactly how I feel. I feel like Jamil McClain in uh, 
But the thing about it, man, I feel I feel like I'm in great shape. I feel like I'm ready to uh, uh, put on a great show, and I don't I don't feel like this is the end of my show. I think this is uh, uh, just another another uh, chapter of my boxing career, and um, I think I honestly believe that uh, um, Adam is a great fighter. I think that he's a really good fighter, but I got to keep my my career going. A few months ago, before your last fight on the Spence Garcia pay per view, you know, you talked about this being your last one in a title, and you mentioned, you know, how great you are, uh, how great you feel physically. But do you still look at this fight and this run overall, where it's still one loss and you're done, you retire for good? Absolutely, absolutely, man. You know, no disrespect to anybody, no disrespect to Adam, because I think he's a great fighter. But personally, man, I. If I lose, there's no reason for me to be in the sport of boxing. I'm in boxing to be a champion. And if I lose, it brings me all the way back to the bottom. And I don't want to keep crawling back up and keep crawling back up again. I'm too old to be doing that, man. So it's a, it's a make or break kind of fight. It's a, a win or go home thing. And uh, I, know, I know Adam has intentions to retire me. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not planning to retire no time soon. I know Adam worked his butt off to get me out of this uh, boxing. But... Uh, I will talk to myself. Thanks, Chris. And uh, Adam, well, a quick question. You know, and you fought in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center countless times, but this being your first main event at the Barclays Center, especially uh, on a big stage like uh, fighting on Fox, how do you feel, you know, getting that opportunity and potentially maybe enticing a guy like Deontay Wilder to fight, especially if you get a big win over Chris? Uh, I feel blessed, you know. Uh, I grew up there. I grew up in Brooklyn, so it's an amazing feeling being uh, the headliner and uh, having all my friends, all my family, the whole community uh, being there and having my back and uh, making something of myself. You know, uh, growing up in Brooklyn, it's, it's very tough, and uh, get to a spot of man, it's it's very rewarding. But uh, done yet? It's just the beginning. And I feel this is the step in, in, in uh, making something even bigger and greater. Uh, do you believe that, you know, you mentioned about wanting to fi- uh, beat Chris quicker than when Deontay Wilder did a couple of years ago. If you do beat him in quick fashion, do you think that alone will be enough to get that world title opportunity? Do you feel like maybe there's still a little more before you can fully convince the title holder that heavyweight before getting that shot? I think so. Uh we spoke of uh, McLean earlier uh, today, so uh, I know Chris finished him at four. Uh, maybe uh, that's how I'll do it to Chris. You know, uh, I know it took uh, Wilder seven or eight rounds, so if I do have the time, uh, I'll be happy. And, you know, that'll be a huge statement, especially on somebody tough like, like Chris Ariola. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Adam. Best of luck to the both of you on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from John Cudney from the Reddit Boxing. Please go ahead. Hi. um, This is a question for um, Chris to start with. So are you concerned about Adam's home field advantage at the Barclays Center? Uh, He really packs in the Polish fans. They're really, really loud during the fights. And they even play the Polish national anthem in between rounds. Um, Is that something you're focused on? No, not at all, man. You know, no disrespect to Polish fans or anything like that because I appreciate every fan. Every fan that comes in there gives me added motivation. You know, gives me added motivation. At the end of the day, it's going to be me and Adam in the ring. There's not going to be no fans in the ring. I'm okay. Okay, thanks a lot. So question for Adam here. Just wondering if you can talk about how big your ambitions are in the sport. You almost you always come off as such a humble guy. So the question is, uh, do you picture yourself and imagine yourself as a future heavyweight champion with all the money and celebrity that can come with that, or do you really just take things one fight at a time? Uh, I mean, that's my goal. Uh, I have a clear mission to be the first Polish world heavyweight champion of the world, and that's the goal. I mean, you gotta stay humble because uh, life, as we know it, could have. Uh, Drop you down back to earth real quick. Quick. Uh, I remember being a uh, up and coming fighter, being four and zero, four knockouts, and I had a little misfortune of breaking my left hand, and I was out for three years. And my whole world came, and I was out for three years, so my whole world came crashing down. So uh, that was a very valuable lesson. And 
to make sure I'm humble. But but the goal remains the same: is to be a world champion. And uh, and the fame and all that stuff comes with it. Great. Uh, I'll cope with it then. But right now, I'm just uh, laser focused on becoming a uh, great champion. And, uh, and, uh, Chris is in my way, so I gotta make sure I'm, I'm able to to win on Saturday. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Chris and Adam. Good luck on Saturday night. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Our next question is going to come from Jeremy Iguerez from fansighted.com. Please go ahead. Hi, Chris. Um, my first question is for you. Um, recently on the TalkBox podcast, you talk about how you were working on new things with Joe Goosen. What are some of the, the new things that, that maybe you paid attention to with Joe that, that you didn't necessarily focus on in the past? Uh, you know what? One of, one of the main things that Joe does is uh, mechanical trainer. You make sure that you throw your jab right, your right hand right. So... I think that my punches are gonna come out the come out the pocket a lot smoother, a lot a lot better, a lot more fluid. Uh, and I had defensive movement, so the main thing is fluidness, making everything just flow. Mhm. Um, you've had uh, a long successful career. You debuted as a professional in 2003. It's 2019 now, and you're 38 years old. How would you say your perspective towards boxing has changed from then to now? Um, well, my perspective from boxing, the main thing that has changed is the work ethic, the way, the way you work. You know, you really have to work like, because boxing is my job, so I have to work like it's my job. I have to treat my body right, like it's, like it's a machine, so, because it is a machine, and um, without a machine, I can't work right, so. It's just, it's just the main thing now, especially that I'm older, is paying attention to my body. I'm working hard and not beating myself up where I ain't going to have nothing left tomorrow. Um, what's the biggest thing that, um, obviously other than, than working hard, what's the biggest thing that, that you think you've learned over the years of doing this? What's the biggest piece of knowledge that, that's been invaluable to you as a veteran? Well, inside the ring... As far as inside the ring, the main thing is staying calm. You can't get all out of your business and get excited because that's just wasted energy. And if, and outside the ring, it's just being as humble as you can be, man. Because you got to remember, you're nobody without the fans. And uh, just like that, they could, they could pull the, the carpet under your feet and then you can land flat in your face. got to be humble. got to respect everyone the way you want to be treated. So... That's just my main thing. Oh yeah, and moderation. Everything in moderation can be can be crazy. Well, thank you, Chris. Last question for Adam. Um, Adam, you and Chris are very physically uh, similar to each other. Same height, same reach. What do you feel that that you do that separates the two of you? Oh, uh, actually, it's just it's, it's very similar styles. Um, we, we fight very similar. We throw a lot of punches. We both come forward. So it's, I guess it's going to be a, a more experienced lion fighting a younger, hungry lion. So you're going to see who's, who, who, who's, uh, who's game plan lands on top. I mean, I think if you took any fighter, me and Chris are so similar. Like I said, so many uh, aspects from our height, our reach, the way we fight. It's going to be uh, the experience could uh, stop the youth. And the youth. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, thank you very much, and best of luck to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Josh Kowalski. Excuse me. From Forbes, please go ahead. Hey, this question is for for Adam. Um, There was a lot of talk made last weekend about uh, Jose Ramirez and Maurice Hooker fighting because it was kind of matching boxing and top-ranked boxing breaking down that so-called, you know, political line between the two, and they were able to get top-notch fighters from, from two competing promotions. And, and then, you know, obviously with, with Lomachenko and Campbell Air this year is, is kind of the, is the return match for top rank and, and match room. Uh, is, is, is that – do you think that's a good thing for boxing to be able to kind of break down – since 
kind of break down this like other side of the street mentality? Uh, I mean, that's the way it's see. I mean, uh, but yes, boxing is also like uh, good because everybody's their own boss. Uh, I think what PBC is doing with boxing is great. It gives you gives us a platform to perform. And uh, I think it got to make sense for the fighters. I mean, a lot of great fights have been made. If it was uh, Pacquiao was Mayweather. I mean, Pacquiao was with, with top rank. Mayweather was with, with uh, Al Heyman, and that fight was made. So uh, I think it's just a uh, better coming to agreement where, where everybody's satisfied. No, I guess it's just because lately it's been, um, in the last couple of years, it seems like it's, it's gotten more politicized, and that's been, it, those fights have, have become harder to make. But with you, if, assuming you beat Chris, and, and maybe at some point you want to fight Anthony Joshua or you want to fight Dillian White with guys with Matchroom or, or whatever because of the affiliation with PBC. Are you, are you pretty confident those fights can still be made that, that you can kind of cross that divide? Of course. Uh, um, all these fights have, uh, cross boundary promotions ha- haven't been in the past. Uh, Ruiz was, was a PBC fighter and he fought uh, Anthony Joshua. So, uh, the fights could happen. It's just a matter of coming to agreement where every, every post has to satisfy and happy with the deal. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Our next question is going to come from Keith Eidick from the com. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, my question is for Chris. Uh, Chris, being that Adam is a heavy favorite in the fight and you're viewed as kind of the older guy and – you know, you obviously have some losses on your record. How much motivation has that given to you that you're kind of, in, in some respects, being counted out in this fight? Um, I don't even pay attention to the odds, to be honest with you. But my my, my only mo- my main motivation is win or go home. This is That's my motivation. My motivation is to keep fighting, to keep putting food on my my family's table, keep making a, making a living off of boxing. That's my motivation. No disrespect to the odd makers or anything like that, but, you know, like uh, uh, Jeff Mayweather says, they don't know shit about boxing. Chris, uh, do you view this as, as your last chance, basically, so to speak? Absolutely. This is my last chance, man. This is my last chance, not because uh, the media or anything. This is my last chance because I say so. You know, if I lose, I go home. No matter if it's a great fight, if it's it's a great fight or a great event or it's a could have gone either way, plain and simple, I lose, I, I go home, I stay home, uh, one and done, no more. So this is this is my added motivation. This is this is what I this is all I want. This is what I'm living for. Thank you, Chris. And and a question for Adam. Adam, how how much more dangerous does that make Chris being that? You know, he's toward the end of his career, and he does view this as his last opportunity to kind of get where he wants to go. How much more dangerous does it make him? Uh, a lot. I think uh, a desperate man is a bit, uh, dangerous man, and I think he's, he's very desperate to, to get another title shot. He had two knockout wins, and uh, he's on the roll. So I got, I'm prepared for the, for the best kicker at Ariola. You know, I know he's going to come forward. He, he, he looks in great shape. I just got to make sure... Uh, have a better game plan and uh, that I'm in better shape, which uh, I know I, I put in a lot of hard work. Thank you, guys. And our last question for today comes from um, Channel Willard from the Boxing Social. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just have a question for Adam. Um, Adam, like it's previously been mentioned, that you're on a journey to become the first Polish born heavyweight champion of the world. Um, with your assessment of Ruiz Joshua 2 later this year, how that goes and uh, mandatories to take place even after that, uh, Deontay Wilder having his next two fights um, with Ortiz and Fury scheduled, um, when do you think your world title shot will come and what do you intend to do until then? Uh, keep training. Uh, I got to keep in shape. I could have had an opportunity to fight Anthony Joshua, but uh, I was out of shape, so I didn't pick up the challenge. So uh, from now on, I'm in the f- boxing. And that's it. Just because uh, the title shot could come around the corner on a couple of weeks' notice because injuries and uh, accidents happen. So uh, I'm definitely just got to be in camp nonstop, always working and uh, perfecting my craft. 
Okay. And uh, just how do you see Ruse Joshua 2 uh, later this year? How do you see that fight going? Do you expect one of the belts to be vacated and maybe you fight for a vacant title? Maybe. Uh, that's a possibility. But uh, boxing plays so far. I think boxing is a great sport. Always full of surprises. So you've got to wait and see what happens. Okay. Thank you for your time. Our next question is going All to right, come we'll- Keith, I had another question from BoxingScene.com. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I just had a quick follow-up question to what Adam just said. Adam, you know, based on what happened in the Ruiz-Joshua fight, I know styles make fights and you don't fight the same way necessarily that Andy Ruiz does, but did you regret not being ready when that call came just because of uh, Joshua was, was upset in that fight? Yeah, I mean, I was upset I was not in any shape. You know, uh, I was in the boxing shape, uh, I went to fight. It was my birthday. I found out my wife was pregnant, so I enjoyed life a little bit, which which I regret because uh, boxing is my first time profession. And uh, since that came call, I was like, yo, I got to get, get in shape and make sure that never happens again. So it was a learning lesson, which uh, maybe stopped me from becoming uh, or, or from achieving my goal a little bit faster than I would have. But uh, at the time, I wasn't ready, so it was the right choice. And uh, just got to continue to build on it. You know, that's what life is about. It's about getting new uh, experiences, learning new lessons, and uh, making, making sure you don't repeat those mistakes. So uh, I'll definitely be in shape now. And if a call comes again in the near future, uh, i got to be ready. 